Hi! Welcome to the 3D Pendan! A while back I published a video on smoothing your 3D pen project by using heat tool of some kind. The link is in the description below if you missed it. Recently I told someone who was trying to decide whether to get one of these tools that they are useful for way more than just smoothing. And he asked, really? Like what? So here are the first nine uses of a heat tool and that is by no means a complete list. to be an equipment review video. I will do that another day. But just a brief note. Most of these are sold as tools for decorative wood burning, but some also for soldering, ironing or other crafts requiring heat. Look for one with temperature control to prevent burning your filament and a good selection of interchangeable tips to accommodate all your intended uses. Now, here are a few reasons you may want to consider getting one. Smoothing is usually the main reason why 3D pen users initially get a heat tool. Because 3D pen strokes will show, no matter how carefully you make them. And sometimes those textures are exactly what you want, but sometimes you would prefer it to look smooth and finished, and this is the fastest way to get there. For details on how to smooth, see the Smoothing Without Burns video in the description. And then you can further finish it by sanding and optionally painting it. Let's say you make mostly intricate linear projects that do not require smoothing. But yes, you will still need a heat tool. When you first start using 3D pen, you may find that whenever you stop, there will be a residual hair-like strand of plastic trailing from the stopping place. Yes, you can cut it off with scissors, but the fastest way to get rid of the hair is to burn them off. There is a feature in these pens called retraction, which is supposed to prevent them in the first place. And with the correct technique and patience, you can learn to minimize them. But some will always creep in there, here and there. Some people use a real flame for burning these off. But I find with fragile, intricate lines, you end up always burning something you were intending to keep. Doing it this way is a bit slower, but gives you way more control. And with the slightly curved leaf tip, it gets you reach a bit around the corners which is helpful to get the ones on the inside. If you are wondering what's with the creepy lighting, the best way to see the hair is if they are backlit and you rotate the projects in front of the light so you can see it from all angles. In bigger projects, I do this after each step because after you join the whole thing together, it may be too late to reach the hair on the inside anymore. So, if you want your linear designs to look clean, especially on close inspection, the heat tool is the way to go. Yes, of course you can cut with scissors. And as the plastic gets thicker, even with a bandsaw. But there are some advantages to cutting it with the heat. 
This tool is designed to do that. That's why you can actually buy an exacto blade that will screw on the heat tool and heat up. And for some projects, that is perfect. However, here I'm planning to cut on a surface I'm particularly protective of, the 3D made base mat. The heat won't bother it since it's made out of silicone, but the sharp blade might ruin it. So I will select a different dollar tip, perhaps a leaf tip, for this particular job, because most of the thin tips will heat cut. I purposefully didn't stop drawing on the edge of this grid to avoid forming knots on the edge. So I drew a bit over the lines. But that means that some of the lines are not as securely attached as they should be and may pop off if I trim them with scissors because that puts mechanical stress on the piece. The heat, on the other hand, seals the edges completely shut as you trim it. So you accomplish two jobs at once. I like that. And playing with grids can be so much fun. I think we might need a video on these. What do you think? The need to drill a hole in your project comes up more often than you would think. Fortunately, it's super easy. Just pick a spot and go for it. Now it's ready to be threaded or riveted, but we will talk about that later on. We already talked about smoothing your projects but you can also go the other way and unsmooth them by burning in a whole new texture. This is great for sculpting hair or animal fur or just any old decorative texture. still need to sand it lightly to get rid of any sharp edges you may have created, but it's way less sanding than when you need it completely smooth. Folding is the cleanest way to create corners. When you fold paper, you score it to get a straight fold along the crease line. When you heat score the plastic, it softens strategically along just the fold line and nowhere else, which allows you to bend it along that heated line. Just get some tool to help you create the right angle. Or any angle you may need for that matter. This way I need to seal only one corner of this house instead of four. While you can definitely join two parts of your project with just the 3D pen alone, it is also possible to just melt the plastic together with your heat tool for a more permanent bond. 
here I have a jump ring which I will align as much as possible melt both ends and then hold it till it cools all sealed and if you keep going and doing that a whole bunch of times you can actually make some pretty intricate chain mail projects or you can join projects with your heat tool along the whole seam to create corners until you have a box another way of joining parts together is micro ironing them with a very small iron mounted on your heat tool this process is similar to welding except I am doing the meltdown under a protective liner so the plastic doesn't stick to my tool at all but just to itself under the liner in this case the liner is a blue masking tape once I feel the corner is joined I will cool down the seam with a cold wet rag to get the plastic cold enough so it will release from the tape I use this method usually when I don't have enough access to join the seam from the inside. The advantage of the ironing method is that you can get the plastic to stretch a bit under the liner, which can save the project because I have just over trimmed this dragon part and now the tube is a bit too short for the edges to meet so we'll see if this works in this case I'm using a Teflon baking sheet for the liner I will massage it with some cold metal tool for a bit to get it to cool down to release from the liner or you can use your wet rag again and here we go, gap is gone and the tube is joined. On skinny curved surfaces, you are better off using a curved hot surface for ironing, like the side of your heat tool. To avoid ironing a flat facet with a flat tool, And we have a dragon tail. And then eventually, after a whole lot more trouble, we have a dragon. Yet another way to join parts is with rivets, which is especially helpful in places where the parts still need to pivot. First, we'll make the rivet, or a hat pin if you like the jewelry term better. Just make sure you stabilize your heat tool somehow, so you have both hands free to work. And, as always, use a piece of Teflon sheet or a piece of parchment to line your button tip of your tool, so you don't stick to it. Cool on the tile as usual and you're ready to rivet. I will use a little piece of cardstock paper to hold my rivet upright and assemble all the components I want to join together on it.
Then I will trim it, leaving just enough material there to seal the other end. This part is a bit tricky, so proceed carefully so you don't melt everything together to the point where it would stop spinning. Which is not entirely essential for this project, but I just think it's fun that it still spins. Anyhow, I hope I convinced you that some kind of heat tool is a good investment. And until next time, go and make something.